so quick. Read the fine print. What's the message? Read the fine print. And I put in front, not so quick. Don't rush. Read the fine print. Father in heaven, as we get into your word, we pray that your word would reach the hearts of your children. Speak beyond human voice. And I pray that while your people listen to the voice of mortal man, they would hear through it the word of the living God, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you tell the person next to you, not so quick, read the fine prince. Our gem text is taken from Proverbs 29, 20, and it reads, Do you see a hasty man in his words? There is more hope for a fool than for him. Do you see a hasty man? That is, someone who is quick to talk, their mouth always running off without thinking. There is more hope for a fool than for him. Not so quick. Read. Fine prince. There are many transactions that we do that require that we sign some document. Many. Many transactions we do, we have to sign some kind of agreement. Sign on the dotted line. Interestingly, these, these contracts, these, uh, 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 these, these, these agreements, they have fine prints on them. Interestingly, we, we tend not to read fine prints. If you go to sign for a credit card, you got some fine prints. You sign up for a loan from a bank, some fine prints. There, you, 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 you go to buy a cell phone, you, you open an email account, you open a WhatsApp account. All of them, all of them have a section down at the bottom. And it asks you to read and tick if you agree or disagree. Am I talking the truth? When I open my email account, I don't read those stuff. Most of us, WhatsApp, email, you, you, you buy an a, a antivirus, anything. You quick to sign without reading the fine prints. Then it's after something happens. After something happens and we end up in some kind of jam, as we say. Some kind of discomfort. We, we raise an issue and the person who is the, uh, the co-signer of the contract, they come and show you the fine prints. Am I talking to somebody? Yes. Fine prints are very important. Sometimes we have, we have checks. A check is issued to you. And you get the check and you don't check to see. This becomes void after six months. You have a check there and you don't want to sign it. My wife took care of her grandmother when she was alive. I always remember that. And um, she was her nominee. My, her grandmother, my grandmother-in-law, became too old to do bank transactions. And she became her nominee. Went to the bank, yes, power of attorney. So the check would come to her grandmother from, you know, pension, old age pension. And then my wife could go to the bank to sign and, and withdraw the money. Are you with me? Okay, don't mind the usher's business. My, listen to me. This is business. She's doing her job. The focus. Are you understanding me so far? Yeah. yeah, we have that here, right? So you go to the bank and 
you have you have the card that shows you are authorized to do business for the person. That's so. And you could withdraw money. You could do all of that. So my, my grandmother-in-law was, was home. Come in, come in. We, oh, my God. Look at these lovely people. Put your hands together and welcome them in church. This lady is walking with, so stately with her family. Hmm? Thank you. Have a seat. Welcome. It's nice to have your company this morning. Yes, who is this princess? Your daughter? Ah, you're beautiful. Oh, my God. God took time to make you. <laughs> you know, it, sometimes we have to say that. Not that all of us are not beautiful, all right? Beauty is really an inside thing. But some of us, is like God took time and shaped us on the outside too. I hope your inner beauty is as much as your outer beauty. And the only how you could be beautiful is inside is if Jesus is in there. Okay? Son? That's your son? Okay, that's the salute. <laughs> You're responsible to care for those two ladies. Okay? Yeah. Whether you believe it or not, big as they are, they go out there on a rat pass, both of them run behind you. <laughs> it's interesting with what it is to be a man, you know. You in your house, and your mommy is mommy, she's in charge. Blah. Let a cockroach fly by. A lizard, a bug fly. She run behind you. So be a man for God. Amen. Amen. Let's get back to the message. That's a whole sermon I gave you there. When something happens, we get to redefine Prince. So my wife was nominee, and she got a check for her grandmother, and she did not go and cash the check, and her grandmother died. You know what happens to that check? Void. That's when we, when we check to define prints. Uh, it's, 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 you have to catch. So when I get a check now, <laughs> when I get a check, I make sure next day you can't spend a check. You can only spend cash. So you can have a $10,000 check. You didn't want nothing until you cash it in. Yeah. Amen. Take advice. This is a family enrichment series. Okay. It's only when we end up in trouble, we read the ticket. You have a ticket, airline ticket. You didn't fly on the day and you decide you want to go and then you read it's void. You can't cash in. You get coupons for, for all these stores and they have time to cash in. It's only when we end up in trouble, we go back and check fine prints. We get into serious problems when we don't read fine prints. And many don't take time to read the Bible in a clinical, eye-opened, you know, meticulous way to get the fine prints that God is talking about. There are some things in scripture, they're like fine prints. You can easily brush past them. The Bible tells us about somebody who got into trouble. He lost a big opportunity because he didn't take time to read the fine prints. He was too quick to what he heard and didn't spend time to hear everything. This event is recorded in Matthew 19. Mark 10 and Luke 18. And we will pull from this and see what happened. The Bible says Luke chapter 18 and verse 18 to 23. After Jesus would have blessed some children. When the disciples tried to push the children away. And Jesus said leave young people alone when they come to me. Don't get in their way. And this young man saw the scene. And the Bible says... A certain ruler came and asked him, Good master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? Luke 18. And Jesus said unto him, Why do you call me good? There is none good except one that is God. That's a highly theological statement because Jesus is actually telling him, there is only one good 
who is God? And why are you calling me good? If there is only one good who is God and you are calling me good, is it that you understand that you are in the presence of God? Do you understand that you're actually talking to God in the flesh? And then Jesus doesn't pursue it. The Bible says this man had some really interesting qualities. He was young. He was successful. He was rich. He had influence because he was a ruler. When, it, when you're young, you are, you are in prime for success. Young man, you see you? When you get a job, hopefully, next few years, young people, you can go to the bank and get a mortgage. They'll give you a mortgage easy. If I go, no. <laughs> they count how much years you have ahead. Am I talking the truth? You can get 30 years mortgage. I might get 30 months. And you'll be paying your mortgage a thousand dollars for thirty years. I'll have to pay thirty thousand a year or a month. Are you with me? So that so that when you're young, you have a lot of opportunities. When you're young, you can walk further and faster. When you're young, you have prime. This young man was not only young, healthy, and wealthy. The Bible says he was respectful. Came and told Jesus, good master, the only person in the entire New Testament in the Gospels referred to Jesus as good. Nobody else called him good. The disciples called him Lord. The disciples called him master, teacher, rabbi. Blind Bartimaeus called him son of David. Nobody ever called Jesus good. Read your Bible. If you find it, call me and tell me. He asked Jesus, listen, the man is young, the man is rich, influential, respectful, and the man asked Jesus the right question. What may I do to inherit eternal life? The only person in the gospel to ask that. Other people ask Jesus for things, but only this guy asks for eternal life. Jairus asked Jesus to heal his daughter. Mary and Martha asked Jesus, why won't you hear when Lazarus was sick? Blind Bartimaeus asked Jesus for his sight. Ten lepers asked to be cleansed. James and John asked Jesus for right hand and left hand on the kingdom. Everybody asks for other things, but this young man nailed it. What must I do to inherit eternal life? Man, the guy had it made on the right track. Everybody would think that he had all the qualifications for the kingdom of God. If this young man were in church today, Anybody would want him for their son-in-law. The Bible says he said something. Jesus said unto him, you know the commandments. You want eternal life? You know the commandments. Don't commit adultery. Don't commit adultery. Keep yourself pure. Don't kill. Either with gun, with knife, with drugs, or your tongue. Don't steal. Leave other people's business alone. Don't lie on people. Respect your father and your mother. Jesus said, you want to be in God's kingdom? Then you have to obey God's laws. You can't want to be in God's kingdom and do what you want. Nobody should expect that they can have eternal life and live in a dis disobedient life. Nobody. Doesn't matter who you are. You cannot have eternal life with God while living disobedient to God. It is disobedience that got us in trouble. And if God gives anybody who is disobedient eternal life, all God is doing is making a sinner immortal. 
Are you in church this morning? I am preaching good stuff, man. I'm preaching good. There's nothing to be watching me so serious about. This is the Sabbath. Wake and lift up this place. Amen. 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 Come on. This, this preacher tired. And amen gives you energy. Yeah. Are you with me? Yeah. It's, either, uh, it's either you give me amen or I get a Lucas aid. Yeah. And an amen is, is healthier than Lucas aid. Amen? Amen. amen? amen. Jesus said, yeah. if you want to live with God, you have to be obedient to God. Yeah. God will not give a practicing sinner immortal life because this thing will never end there'll just be another rebellion in heaven thank you I deserve that I mean if I'm preaching good I'm preaching hard and some people in pre uh, interpret hard preaching like good preaching are you with me there are some people that don't care what you say. Just say it loud. It's getting hot in here this morning, man. Sabbath is a no jacket day. Say it loud. And there are some preachers, they say nothing. Crap. But just because they're saying it loud. God is good. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Break it down. Pull down stronghold. Blah, blah, blah. And hear the church. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on. I am preaching of cornflakes. This is, this is metemg. Uh, this is cook up. Are you listening to me? This is oil dung. Are you listening to me? Come on. This is provision. Uh, are you listening to me? This is no fast food. Nobody. Going into the kingdom. Practicing sin. Yeah. Good fry dumpling. Yeah, Patrick, pray for me. Janicia, Port of Spain, Trinidad is watching you. Please. Oh, Lord, thank you. Keep praying for me. Nobody. I don't know. I don't know. Some people can't get it right. God will understand. Then the blood of Jesus has no power. Why are you singing? Would you be free from your burden of sin? There is wonder working power in the blood. Why are you singing that? Why are you singing grace, grace, wonderful grace? Why are you singing? I was sinking deep in sin. Far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stand within, sinking to rise no more. But, but, but the master of the sea, marvelous grace, marvelous grace. There is power in the blood of Jesus. We want to excuse. We want to excuse. We want to drink alcohol and still drink from the river of life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We want to sleep with, with sinners in adultery and then walk the streets with angels. Tell the neighbor next to you, please tell them. Never happen. The Lord said, you know the commandments. You know. You know. You know. You know what God, Jesus told this guy? And he's telling all of us, you're, you're, you're dodging and you're hiding. You know. You know. Adultery wrong. You know lying wrong. You know 
homosexuality is a sin. You know it. You know stealing is wrong. You know it. You know drunkenness is wrong. Don't steal. You know what God says. Obey and live. The Bible says Matthew joins Luke in Matthew 19 and 20. And the young man said unto Jesus, All these things have I kept from my youth up. Every time you preach, God reveals a truth. You mothers, you fathers, you adults who want to stop your children from serving God. This man said, put back the text. This young man said, all these have I kept from my youth. Come on. Process it. Process it. He too small. He don't know what he's doing. He not mature enough. Oh, put it there. All this have I kept from my youth. God has a way of nailing it. Pastor Roy, you got that? Pastor Roy, you got that, brother? All this have I done from my youth. You can teach your child to give their lives to Jesus from my youth. And teach them, don't steal. Teach them, honor your father and your mother. Teach them, don't lie. From a All this have I kept from my teenage years. That's what the text says. All this have I kept when I became an adolescent. All this have I kept when I was in, uh, 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 um, you know, I, I was an adult. All this have I kept when I was mature. The Bible will deal with you, Burton. Bible will deal with you. And if you can't deal with him, Samuel said, all this have I kept from my youth. You can't deal with that? Miriam will tell you when they wanted to kill Moses and that little girl put him in a basket and when the adults wouldn't go out because they're afraid, little Miriam protecting her brother as she go, he goes down the river. All this has she done from her youth. Naaman's maid. When Naaman had leprosy. Yeah. The evangelist yeah. was a little girl yeah. in Naaman's house. Yeah. All this she did from her youth. David went out. Yeah. David went out when he was taking care of the father's flock and they wouldn't let him join the army because he was too young. Yeah. And he saw a lion take a sheep and carried it. He saw a bear and little David went with his staff and put a good licks on them. All that he did from his youth. The problem is not the child. It's not the child can't do it. It's that you have a struggle to help them to understand it. Not a child. All this. And he didn't lie. He did not lie. Church, the brother did not lie. Because if he lied, 
Jesus would have told them, you're not speaking truth. What a world we would be if we had young people like that. All this have I done since my youth. He would do well in business. He would do well in church. Young as he was, he would make a good first elder. He'd be a fine youth leader. He'd be a faithful and honest treasurer. Because he never stole. He'd be a good pastor. He'd make a fine husband. Every mother would want him for her son-in-law. A father could turn his back and give this young man his daughter. He would impress everybody. And he did impress Jesus. Watch the text. Go back up, sweetheart. And Jesus, beholding him, loved him. Now, how could Luke and Matthew and them write that? You know why? Because there is something called a love look. There's a look when you look at somebody, they see love. That's why parents can know. Parents can know when, to, when the young people are attracted to each other. Your mommy will know. When you bring the girl and it's only my friend. No. They know when you, yeah, your daddy will know. When you bring the boy, your face just glow. Your eyes just twinkle. When your parents watch you and adults watch you, they say something going on there. No, mommy, it's not that. You have a love look. Jesus beholding him loved him. They could see it in Jesus' face. There are only four people in the Bible that the Bible says Jesus loved. John is the disciple Jesus loved. Mary and Martha, Jesus loved. Lazarus, Jesus loved. He whom thou lovest is sick. And all the disciples, he loved them. See, special. There's a special thing. It's not that he loves them more than anybody else, but he has a love with them that when, you, when he's in the presence, you see it in his face. You behold in him. Loved him. Jesus looked at him with the eyes of love. A lady can tell when a guy is interested in her. More than men. Yeah. Not so, ladies? Just the way he looks at you. The lady will say, why are you looking at me like that? It's a, it's a look. The, the eros look. Am I talking the truth? Yes. Yes. That is serious. It's more than serious. That look just gets you in the hospital. And not in, from an accident. And the Lord said unto him, one thing you lack, one thing, go your way, sell whatever you have and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven and come, take up your cross, follow me. Wow, wow pastor. What a word. Imagine, imagine Jesus said one thing you lack. One thing. What a glorious privilege for Jesus to tell you. You have one thing. I got a list. Anybody else here? I have a list. If Jesus were to come to me, he couldn't say one thing. He say, you, you got one thing, but you got the rest wrong. <laughs> Jesus tells him one thing. I lack this thing and that thing. I get angry with my wife. I, I don't do this. Sometimes people drive me up a wall. My, my, I'm not patient with my neighbor because every time I drive up, the car in front of my driveway. I'm mad at him. I got a list. But Jesus said, one thing. I'm sure many of us would say the same thing. Jesus, I have a list. Come on, agree with me if that's you. I got a list, Jesus. 
If, if, if Jesus tells you today, you got one thing, but you're keeping the biggest thanks giving. Tell me the thing, Lord. Tell me. I want to nail it so I'm clean to go. Jesus said to him, you got one thing. The Bible says when the man heard that, he went away. Matthew 19, 22. He went away sorrowful because he had a lot. And when you read the text, the Greek says, he went away sorrowful. It says his face fell. You know when somebody disappointed. Yeah, his face fell. And he went away with the, the jaw drop. The Bible said he came running. And he went drooping. You mean heaven so hard? Why Jesus make this eternal life thing so hard? I mean, Je listen, listen what Jesus said. The man said, uh -um, I don't disrespect, I don't steal, I don't lie, I honor my father. The man knocked out all that. And Jesus said, one. One. And he found one was too much. Brother became sad. He thought that to give up all this wealth for eternal life wasn't worth it. He thought, what's the message for today? Don't be, not so quick. Read the fine prints. He thought he had to give up everything. He thought eternal life was too costly. He thought he was going to lose everything. He thought that Jesus was driving a hard deal. He thought that Jesus was about to make him a pauper. He thought that Jesus was unfair. And he left walking away sorrowful. But he was wrong. Dead. Wrong. He didn't listen to Jesus. Don't be so quick. Don't be so quick. He didn't realize that Jesus was not out to make him a pauper. Jesus don't make you broke. The Bible says, John 10, 10, the thief comes to steal and kill and to destroy. But I am come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. The Greek word is perisos. I have come to give you life and beyond. I have come to give you super abundance. I have come to give you more than you had before. Jesus did not offer him proper lifehood. Jesus actually told him, come follow me and I'll make you rich. <laughs> I, I, I'll make you rich. I'll give you more and I'll give you better. When you accept Jesus, your home becomes better. When you accept Jesus, your finances become more. When you accept Jesus, your achievements get further. When you accept Jesus, your self-esteem becomes more intact. When you accept Jesus, you get more. And somebody in this room needs to understand that. You think you're leaving all that to accept Jesus. The only thing you leave behind when you accept Jesus is sin. Sin. Jesus was introducing him to more and better. The Bible says, not so quick, read. Let's read the fine prints. You lack one thing. Luke 18, 22. You lack one thing. Go, sell all you have. Distribute and thou shalt have treasure in heaven. Thou shalt have treasure in heaven. Jesus never told him, give up his wealth. That's it. All he told him, change your bank. Put your hands together for Jesus. Come on. 
Jesus never said, give up your wealth. He just said, bank in a safer place. Because my Bible says, Matthew 6, lay not up for yourselves treasure upon the earth where moth and rust that corrupt. Don't bank in the stock market. Don't bank in, 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 in um, your trading. Don't bank there because tomorrow, all of a sudden, you can hear the stock market crash. Bank in heaven. Where you don't have moth, you don't have rust, and you ain't got no thieves. For where your treasure is, your heart. Jesus didn't tell him to give up all Jesus said exchange. Jesus said, Manzano, sell your house in Tobago. Leave your job in Tobago and I have a house for you and a job in the United States. You're not giving up anything. All you're doing is exchanging. Exchange what you have on earth for treasure in heaven. And if your treasure is in heaven, you have more. Jesus offered him more, but he was confused. He did not read fine prints. So many people today, they get confused and miss out because they're not stopping to read the fine prints. They're hustling on. So the Bible says, where are you going with the chairs? Where are you going with the chairs? Oh. That's not my business. That's not your business. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Read the fine prints. The Bible says in verse 28. Verse 28. Let's go. We read in the fine prints. Then Peter said, after the guy left, Lord, we left all. Followed thee. Jesus said, truly I say unto you, no man left houses or parents or brethren or wife or children for the kingdom's sake, who shall not receive many more in this present time and in the world to come still get a lining up. Hello, you know what's lining up? How you say it in, 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 in Jamaica? When you go to the market and you buy five pounds of banana and they just throw in an extra, brata! Hello! Hello! Hallelujah! Jesus said, when you accept me, you don't only get eternal life, you get some brata. Bajan or Barbajan say, you got a little some, some. Trinidad, we say, line it up. But I like how Jamaica say it. When you accept Jesus, you get what people? Brata. You don't only get eternal life. He said right here. You get more. More. I pull you from the Caribbean. Where you've been struggling. And once you stay with me, I bring you up in the United States. And you get brata. Not only heaven. You get some extras. But you need to read. Fine prints. Many more. Jesus said, when you follow me, you get more and better. You have many houses. You don't only have one house. You got many. I came to the United States for this program. I live in, over, I have a house across there. <laughs> By the studs, I, I, that's my, I live there. <laughs> you, you, you see people, you don't understand the gospel. I live over by Karen. I get up. I go in the fridge and take what I want. You don't understand the power of the gospel. The Bible said the New Testament church has all things. Come on. All those cars out there is mine. God just give you to keep them give you to keep them. We have all things common. 
I want to show you. It's mine. We, we joint owners. You see, some people afraid that, you know, boy. They're afraid that kind of preaching. But, but listen, let me tell you. It's joint owners. You know why? Because the one you own is mine. And the one I own is yours. You end up with two instead of one. See how the gospel is powerful? You leave here and you go to Australia. And you drop there. And the taxi is supposed to pick you up. And they didn't come. Your brother, some people leave um, um, Caribbean and all over the world, they come to the States. And when they came, the family don't like them anymore. They didn't think, and they get them out. Huh? You want to show, you show power this statement is? All you got to do is go a phone book and find Seven Day Adventist Church. You got houses. And if somebody walked through this door now and said they got some problems, the husband put them out, the brother put them out, or they came to the States and they can't find where they're supposed to go and they, they can't find a way. And they lost, they're not leaving here without somebody taking them home, somebody making sure that they get where they want to go. Huh? Hundred fall in this present life. God takes care of his children. Every house represented inside of here is my house. And if you play stingy with me, God will take it back. When I accepted Jesus, I got more. Real stuff. I just, I just don't want to come and sleep by you. But for the four weeks I'm here, I can say, okay, this week I'm staying my car in, and next week I'll stay by you. You better fix my bed. <laughs> fix my bed and my room. Because God gave you that extra space for somebody else. Yeah. Yeah, I passed have a set of my suit. I just don't take them back yet. <laughs> now set a suit. Set a suit back up there. And ever so often, hear what God does. When you're playing stingy and you don't want to give the other children the thing, he make you put on size. All of a sudden. All of a sudden, I put, I just, I put it on weight. I diet in. I put it on weight. Hello? I fast in. I put it on weight. You know what the Lord said? The man jacket that you have, give it to him. And that's when you're going to pick up the dress, pick up the jacket, and carry it and bring it to the welfare. And pastor will get his jacket then. Yeah. In Jesus' name. You have in church or what? Jesus never call anybody to the kingdom and they end up with less. He's the God of the much more. Tell me one Bible character that end up with less. He told Abraham, come out of the church of Aldis, come out of, uh, of, of the Chaldees, and he gave him Canaan. He told Moses, leave Pharaoh's throne, and he made him sit in heaven right now. He's sitting with the king of kings. He told Rahab, leave your prostitution work in Jericho. And she became progenitor of Jesus Christ. He told Mary Magdalene, leave your prostitution wing. And she became the first preacher of the resurrection. You never leave where you have and go with Jesus and end up with less. He told Peter, James and John, leave your fishing. And they became apostles. The rich young ruler. Didn't stick around to read the fine prints. The only thing you give up to follow Jesus is sin. Psalm 16, 11 says, you will show me the part of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand, pleasures forevermore. Jesus will make you sing in the shower in pain. Jesus will make you dance in the street 
among all this stress, Jesus will make you praise God like Paul and Silas after you get a good licking. Jesus brings you into the place of the much more. Paul says, read the fine prints. Don't be so quick. Romans 8, 18, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not to be compared with the glory which we shall receive when the day comes and you look back, you will say all what you suffered in this world is nothing for the glory what you will get. Read the fine prints. 1 Corinthians 2, 9. It is written, I have not seen, neither ever heard, neither can you begin to imagine the things which God had prepared for them that love him. No earthly artist could paint a picture of the glories of heaven. There's nothing on earth that could compare. Your Audi and your Mercedes Benz, nice as it is when you're out there on the highway and the freeway, it's like breeze. Not so? But when you get to heaven, you have your own wings. You're telling me about, hello, you want to feel breeze? Wait till you get to glory land. Come on. You're flying without effort. I traveled from, from, from New York JFK to, to uh, Dubai to preach for camp meeting in Kenya some years ago. When I got on Emirates, I said, man, Emirates nice. Flying Emirates. Hello. The economy in Emirates better than first class. In other airlines. Uh, up there, boy. Oh, gosh. I feel nice. I say, ministry, nice, boy. I say, Lord, no, I'm preaching. I want to fly more. When I went to London to preach for, for a, a meeting in, 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 in um, Brixton Church, flying in an airline, nice, boy. I say, this ministry thing, Nice. A preaching boy. One of these days are flying when Jesus comes and the dead in Christ shall rise first. I don't need Emirates. I don't need Caribbean Airlines. I'm going up without plane. That could be nice. Paul says in Romans 6, 8, 16, the spirit Bears witness, don't be so quick, read the fine prints. Now the Spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if we are children, we are joint heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. You know what is a joint heir? Everything the person entitled to, you entitled to. And we wrap it up with this. Don't be so quick. Luke twelve thirty two, fear not little flock. It is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. You come to New York and you get keys to the city and you feel big. When you get to glory, you have keys to the kingdom. Read the fine prints. That is why people struggling to give their heart to God. You know why? Because you feel you're giving up something. I had to give up carnival. I had to give up party. You ain't giving up nothing but sin. But you get in. And I'll close it with this. Bring the, bring the people who get in baptized. Boy, I sweat today. I had to go home and change. I have to go home. I have no clothes iron. I think Brother Studdard have a shirt day for me. I just go in the wardrobe and get my shirt. In Jesus' name, brother. In Jesus' name. Yeah, one of my shirts there. Yeah. I don't care. The day I could, I could look a little bright. In Jesus' name. Are you having church today? Yeah, that's what we're missing out. We're missing out. We think God taken from us. You know? You have to return a little tight. You're complaining all that money. When you're getting heaven, you're walking on goal. Hmm? Goal is heaven, pay, um, uh, asphalt. Huh? 
Goal is what they pay for heaven with. Yeah. Think what people fighting for. To stick around their neck and they walking with a big chain and they feeling a rich. <laughs> you know? These hip hop people, you know, big thing, all the teeth. Girl, you know? I have gold. I have gold on my teeth, I go, you know? Watch me now, watch me now. Teeth. Here, here, here the Lord tell me. But I don't don't wear that. You have to wear that. What he wearing there is heaven pavement. The Lord said, the Lord said, the Lord said, all what he, what he has in his mouth and around his neck is the pave of heaven. Imagine that. Why you want to wear pavement around your mouth? <laughs> we have in church here or what? <laughs> Hallelujah. Fear not. Father has given you the kingdom. Get the candidates ready. And if you think that bad enough. If you think the title deed to heaven is bad enough or sweet enough, I'll leave one with you. Not so quick. Read the fine prints. One more text. Put it up for us. To him that overcome, will I grant to sit with me on my throne even as I have overcome and sit with my father in his throne. Jesus says, read the fine prints. One of these days, every child of the living God will get a chance to sit on... I thought you come in for your chair. You get to sit on daddy's chair. You, when you get to glory, everybody, press pause, brother, press pause. I want this to get in. You get to sit with him. Jesus, not lying. That's all? You sit with him on his throne. Amen. I don't know if it's going to be on his lap or get a chance to sit on the chair itself. <laughs> to him, where the candidates, bring them, please. All the people who are going to give their heart to the Lord in baptism. Come. You will get a chance to sit with the Lord on his throne. And somebody in here need to make a decision. Somebody. If you're listening, you came in here as a guest. Sweet, sweetie P, you don't want to sit down on that throne? You know, you know, what, you know what's so big about that throne? Lucifer wanted to sit there. And God told him no. He fighting for that. God told him no. God is going to take his children who he saved and give all of us a long line. And when they call my name, well, you know, all, all, everybody else can rush that Moses will get our first time, Elijah, all of them going before us. But when he called me to sit, no, I walk in slow. Mm. Imagine that, brethren. This is royalty. Waiting my turn. You know, it is to sit on the throne of the universe. Daddy said, That is my children. My children could always sit on their father's recliner and are going to take my time. Mm. Oh, you know what it is to sit? And feel as joint air with Jesus. I mean, the throne is real big, you know. It's like, when I sit down there, you can't stay too long. Because you might feel you are God. And Lucifer got in trouble for that, you know. I sit down and I take my deep breath. Thank you, Lord. And then I get up and I say, Pastor Jackson, your turn. Are you going to miss that? tree of life, river of life, sit down on the throne, join us with Christ. Yes. Huh? Don't be so quick. Read. <laughs>